Ricky Gervais is probably best known for creating the original British version of The Office. Well, that and roasting the hell out of celebrities at Hollywood events like the Golden Globes. A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god. And His character, David Brent, from, from The Office, is an arrogant narcissist who comes across as pathetic but not pitiable. Hello. Let's get you sat down. Okay. No, I've got one okay. over here. Ready? Ah, good. Pop it down. Good. He is offensive, selfish, and mean-spirited. While Ricky has played other characters, most notably the character Andy Millman in the show Extras, he hasn't really had much success adapting his persona and comedic style to widespread success in the United States. Instead, finding himself playing small parts in movies such as Stardust, Brilliant. The Night at the Museum movies, Now I know you're mental. And The Muppets Most Wanted. Oh, you know life's gone to the dogs when your boss is a frog. But for a few brief moments, he starred in two romantic comedies. Now, to be clear, these movies are more comedy than romance, but one of them, Ghost Town, seems like it was the perfect movie to suit Ricky Gervais's foray into anything bearing close resemblance to something that could have starred Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. If I really knew you, I know what I would find. Instead of a brain, a cash register. Instead of a heart, a bottom line. Gervais plays a misanthropic dentist named Bertram Pincus, who is living and working in New York City. He hates everyone. Everything they do annoys him. He merely wants to be left alone to do whatever it is a man named Pincus might want to do, which seemingly isn't much of anything. The dentist, with whom he shares an office, tries to connect with him, I'm gonna need and he blows him off. I'm going to need panoramic x-ray machine for most of the morning tomorrow, so if that fits in with your appointments... Fine. I've cleared my schedule for tomorrow. Really? Oh, well... <laughs> Oh, I, I, I hear it's supposed to be a lovely day. <laughs> and? Right. Well, sorry to, sorry to bother you. Um, you know, we brought some cake. Uh, Mrs. Prashar and I just had our baby, so. <laughs> a beautiful neighbor, played by Tay Leone, experiences the callous impoliteness of Pincus as he hates people so much, he purposely closes the elevator just to avoid the possibility of a human interaction. Pincus's only joy seems to be the relief he feels when he is able to quiet his patients when working on their teeth. Gervais's performance convinces us that Pincus just might be the world's most high-functioning hermit. Most hermits live in the woods or somewhere else deep in the country where they can escape from humanity by isolation. You are not Labeef. But Pincus manages to isolate himself in New York City, one of the largest cities in the world. He is surrounded by people, but is utterly alone, and that is how he wants it to stay. Pincus' life is going just fine until he has to go in for a colonoscopy, that most dreaded of medical procedures. Somehow, during this dreaded procedure, uh, he dies. Well, at least briefly. Upon leaving the hospital, he begins to encounter ghosts. Apparently, his brief time as a dead person has given him the ability to see dead people. But unlike the Sixth Sense, these people know they are dead and they want something from Pincus. I see dead people. They don't know they're dead. Each ghost remains tied to the earth by something or someone that will not let them go. One of these ghosts, played by Greg Kinnear, was the cheating husband of Pincus's neighbor. She is an Egyptologist who is dating an activist lawyer and seemingly is moving on with her life after Greg Kinnear's character has died. Oh, oh. Wow! You 
are not going to believe what almost just happened. At first, Pincus's attitude is unchanged by his brush with death. Huh? You do yoga? My girlfriend's got a studio. I'll show you where it is. Girlfriend? I thought you said you were married. Did I say I was a perfect person? Come on, let's hail a cab. She's hot. You don't exist, okay? You're the bizarre after effects of some poorly administered anesthetic. I'm going to go home to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, with any luck, you'll be gone. But his life is, is not. Uh, Pincus cannot escape these ghosts. They can enter through closed doors, and unlike his patients, he cannot stick some dental tool into their mouth to quiet them. Pincus the loner cannot escape his worst nightmare, other people. What follows is a fairly standard love story. Pincus falls in love with his neighbor, and she, him, beautiful, grows and changes and becomes a better person, but overall the movie is a step above most Hollywood fare. What separates it from most of the usual garbage from Hollywood is the performances by Gervais and Kinnear. Gervais is the perfect curmudgeonly protagonist, simultaneously hateable and pitiable. And Kinnear displays the sadness of a dead man who wishes he could change who he was when he was alive. But alas, he cannot. Gervais manages to use what is not exactly a revolutionary script to bring something extra to the screen. Sure, his character is the typically Gervaisian, sardonic, and sarcastic character that we might expect, but he isn't as callous and petty as, say, David Brent. Something about this character and movie seems to have fit Gervais perfectly. When did you get your horse? Now, Ghost Town got decent reviews from critics and maintains a generally positive score among audiences today, but it only made 27 million on a budget of 20 million. And when followed up by The Invention of Lying, which was slightly more financially successful, but generally less well regarded by critics and audiences, it spelled the end of Gervais's foray into the role of a leading man. Looking through the reviews of Ghost Town demonstrates a similar sentiment among critics. Roger Ebert saying it this way, Ghost Town is a lightweight rom-com elevated by its performances. He also pointed out what made the comedy work so well. Why do I think Ricky Gervais is so funny in Ghost Town? Because he doesn't want to appear funny. He wants to appear aggravated. Now Ebert brings up an interesting point. Farces, slapstick, and spoofery are fun. Just look at the residual success of classics like the Marx Brothers and the Three Stooges. However, there is something to be said for situational comedy, not situational comedy like television sitcoms with canned laughter and recycled jokes, but comedy that is derived from the situation that a serious character finds himself in, something similar to Groundhog Day or My Cousin Vinny. These characters, at least at times, take themselves and their situation so seriously that comedy necessarily unfolds. Ricky Gervais doesn't need to tell you he is telling a joke. Instead, he just acts creating a character that is funny, rather than just saying funny lines. It makes me wonder what could have been had things gone differently. What if Gervais had been a bigger name at the time? What if Ghost Town had been a surprise hit, and been followed by something a little less off-putting as the invention of lying? Did we miss out on what could have been the establishment of a pudgy, unconventional new star? Some quasi-Bill Murray-esque career with a fair number of classics? Or are we better off with what we got? Would Gervais have fallen prey to the grinding gears of Hollywood, trampled into mediocrity and trite unwatchable movies, in an attempt to keep his relevancy? We will never know. And I'm kind of glad we don't know. I somehow think the latter would have happened instead of the former. So, let's enjoy what we do have. A Ricky Gervais comedy that fits him, but has heart charm, and a little romance. It hurts when I smile. I can fix that for you. Explosion! Fly, Fox!